We're now going to talk a little bit more about the actual, what happens when you try and make biodiesel. And then we're going to make a batch. We've got one over here to make. Remember from our previous little spiel, to make biodiesel, we take oil, we add methanol, we add a catalyst, which is either potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide are the most common. We add some heat, we mix, and out the other end, we're going to get biodiesel and glycerin. We also get a little bit of water. Okay? Well, that's a problem, and it's something we need to talk about, because oil plus water plus catalyst equals soap. It's bad. In the old days, our grandparents used to make soap by taking oils, fats, lards, lye, tallows, what have you, and they would add that thing that we call lye. Um, and they'd add some water and they'd mix it up, and there's a process, a fancy word called saponification, and they would get soap. Well, when we're making biodiesel, we make a little bit of soap. In fact, I have a sample here of some biodiesel that I made, and I don't know if the camera can get this quite good, but there's a white layer right in between there. That's soap that I made when I made this biodiesel as well. So I've got biodiesel in the top, glycerin on the bottom, and this little bit of layer of soap in there. Soap is bad because it cuts into your biodiesel. You want all the biodiesel you want, right? So let me tell you how we get around that. When you make biodiesel in the real world, here's the chemistry that goes on. Remember I said we had these little critters with three little chains hanging off of them. We're going to call this a try. Okay? Well, most of us are going to get that oil from a restaurant that fries stuff. As you heat oil, it naturally will decompose into what I call a diglyceride or a monoglyceride. And what's happened is these chains have naturally broken away, this is a mono, from the oil molecule in its natural form. <clears throat> well, let's talk about what happens when we make biodiesel with these out here. We have a triglyceride, we have a diglyceride, and this little thing hanging out here. We're going to add, so this is our oil, where they're going to add to it some methanol, and then we're going to add some lye. What happens is you have these acids that are hanging out in the oil that make the acid acidic. Normal, natural, recurring oil is you got a pH of about 7. It's neutral. There's no acids, no bases in it, okay? The pH scale goes from acid to base, with 7 being in the middle. You got a base here, okay? This is an acid. If any of you have ever made a volcano when you were kids, with a little diaphragm or what have you, we would add baking soda, On one side, this is our uh, base, by the way, plus lemon juice. And you get this, so we've got an acid. You get this beautiful volcano coming up. What's going on is the base and the acid are neutralizing each other, okay? Well, in biodiesel, when we make biodiesel out of oils that have some acid to it, remember that we are using some lye. Well, lye is a base, and it reacts with the acid to make soap. And so anytime we have oils that are unnatural or that have been broken down that are either diglycerides or monoglycerides, and you've got what we call free fatty acids, We're going to make some soap. And so what we have to do to counteract that is we have to add more lye than we normally need to make the biodiesel so that we counter that. The method to do that or to know how much we do, to know how much acid is in here is a method called a titration, which we're going to do a little bit later today. 
but the basic chemistry, remember, is just oil plus methanol plus catalyst is going to equal biodiesel in the glycerin. You're going to get rid of the glycerin and any excess water. We're going to wash the biodiesel, and then we're going to be on our merry way. But in real life, a lot of times you're going to have acids in your oils, and those are going to produce some soap. So we'll now move on to our next section.